On 20th October 2014, Kenyans from all walks of life thronged the Nyayo National Stadium to mark the fifth Mashuja Day. All of us have Mashujas in our lives. We give thanks to that aunt who sacrifices her comforts to pay for school fees or hospital fees. The local policeman who turns up every day for work ready to apprehend dangerous criminals. Our nurses and doctors who go beyond the call of duty to soothe our pain and give us hope. We are grateful for those who mentor the young, the philanthropists whose charities save lives and bring relief to the orphaned, the poor, the sick, and the hungry. Initially as Kenyatta Day, it was celebrated to remember the detention in Kapenguria of freedom fighters, Achieng Oneko, Bildad Kagia, Fred Kubai, Jomo Kenyatta, Kongo Karumba, and Paul Ngei, often referred to as the Kapenguria Six. Charles Rubia is one of the opposition figureheads who fought closely with Kenneth Matiba, who was crippled after his detention without trial, and his business empire now in ruins. I feel like calling a rally one day and really speak my mind. See, I'm going to tell you what I think. You hate me or like me, but I've said it. I can now die. Kenyatta, because of the political dimensions, gave me a job as an assistant minister in the Ministry of Education. And I refused. A mayor is chairman of the council, as they say. That means a council is a composed of councillors. Then they have committees through which they operate in running their local authority. Then the mayor becomes the chairman of council, as they say. That means that he is really chairman of the council. And the council does not become fully constitutional until and unless the mayor chairs their last meeting in a month. I became mayor the first time in 9 July 1, 1962. That was just a year before uh, Uhuru. And as an example of the weight, the volume of the engagement in those days, I tell you, this is a book of 76 pages of my speeches in one year. In one year, that is 1962 to 63. It's a booklet with all my speeches, not everyone, but really the important ones, those that were repeating were left off. But it is a 76 page, that one. That gives you a rough idea of the volume of the work of the mayor then. The script was always the same, credentials at State House, followed by a reception by the mayor of Nairobi. The mayor of Nairobi had a special role in independent Kenya because that is where all the ambassadors are. So when an ambassador came, he would go to State House to present his credentials. The next stop was City Hall to sign the mayor's book. So my role was a bit more than just a mayor of the mayor towns. And I became very, very involved. So that in 1964, I went to the States. I was invited by their government. And I went to America for two months, visiting their cities, understanding their government system. He served both President Kenyatta and Moi as a minister, and privately his businesses especially a tour company called Kenya Mystery Tours. Kenyatta, because of the political dimensions, gave me a job as an assistant minister in the Ministry of Education, and I refused. I said, may I have five years and now become assistant minister? 
kitu kidogo but later kinyata was very charismatic he looked at me he said you you refuse i said hapana mzee nitakubali i agreed but i served under kinyata for five years as assistant minister of education my minister was arab toet All that changed in 1990 when he and Mr. Kenneth Matiba teamed up to demand a referendum on the country's political future. A group of us, uh, there were many of us, but a group of us in Nairobi used to have meetings trying to plan how to sensitize Kenyans to campaign for a multi-party situation to be reintroduced and uh, we worked with we worked with all kinds of people christians churches we worked with the trade unionists we worked with a lot of lawyers uh, lawyers especially were very many we worked with farmers even you may recall that uh, organizations like KFA which was a farmers organization had been ruined so we talked to a lot of farmers about it but more so politicians and uh, generally the campaign was very well received throughout the country some civil servants also we got in touch with some of them particularly those that we felt had been getting raw deal and uh, so we managed to get a lot of view from all shades of our opinion with regard to the churches we worked very closely with the uh, archbishop manasses kuria we worked with ngwana nzeki for catholic side and even the muslims in some areas So we sensitize a lot of people throughout the country through the organizations. And generally we felt the time was ripe. And uh, uh, well a few people decided to put their neck on the news as they say. I was one of them. So we thought of We don't want to be a subversive. We want to be constitutional as it was then. So we applied for meetings. You could hold a meeting without the written permission of the administration. In that case, in Nairobi we had a Mr. Waiganjo who was the provincial commissioner. Mr. Waiganjo and I were knew one another. In fact, in a way we could say we were friends and i said oh i can't join my friend he's a pc so i put out an application for a rally to have a rally at kamukunji in nairobi and uh, <laughs> i can't join being the pc and the civil servant uh, did not reply to my application either acknowledging or if turning it down and that is when uh, we decided whatever happens the meetings had been organized and we put it in the papers on the 7th of July 1990 was the date we never received the reply but through our system the whole country was waiting in fact organized to come to the meeting on the 7th of July 1990 at Kamkonji Nairobi we had people from the coast people from western people from uh, southern throughout and i don't want to make it too personal but i can tell you from Mombasa we had three buses organized three buses which would bring people western kenya uh, and i think i can mention here Here Mr. Jafet Shamala I saw his name in the paper the other day he died he was a lawyer by training Shamala was with us 
and it was a man who was working on Western Kenya, the Baluya side, <laughs> put it that way. So everybody was ready for the 7th July meeting. Saba Saba was the climax of Rubia's tribulations with Matiba, and they never got to be there. They were in detention. We had a meeting at the Mosaica Country Club. I was a member of the management committee there. And as I attended a meeting of the committee, I was picked up at about 6.30 in the evening. Now, July, July is a very cold month here, as you know. It's really what we might call our own winter here. Very cold day and very dull. It was chilly. And I was picked up at about 6.30 or nearly 7 and taken to a for detention. But then, the same day, Kennedy Matiba was arrested from his office. And uh, John Camino was my lawyer. John Camino is still alive. He was my lawyer. And as I was detained at the Nairobi headquarters, police headquarters here, I refused to talk to them until my lawyer came. And I gave them the name of John Kaminwa as my lawyer. So I said, I'm not saying anything until Kaminwa comes. So Kaminwa came around to look for me, and he was arrested also. <laughs> but that was the detention date, 4th July, 1990. I was in a very dark cell, very dark, eh? big cell. <laughs> Oh, like huko, that small light, like a very, very small star there. Okay, I'm going to go to the corner. And I started a very funny story we were hearing that they keep you, they will put snakes. <laughs> so they put me there for five, one week. I was being interrogated twice a day. And that is, I later learned, it was Nyayo House. I think I was going to be detained also that time. This was happening in July 1990. In February, Dr. Robert Oko, the foreign minister, had been murdered. Rubia thus had real fear that the same could happen to him. I can tell you, there was a famous man called James Opio. James Opio is a fam was a famous interrogator in that, uh, and he was one interviewing me. One day, I asked him because used to, they used to call me M Zero B I N. Sasa we uta sikuuskani uta um uta pindwa sirikari. Eh? You know, then one day he told me, look, in Africa, you don't argue with presidents. You've been arguing with your president. And if we kill you, Kenya will go on. This is Africa. Then I got annoyed. This was during the interview. I was I said, look, if you, if, are you threatening me? Why don't you then kill me? If that's what you want. Then he said, uh, no, we, we want you to tell us the truth. Where are you getting guns from? When are you going to overthrow the government? And said things like that, Mongiki. They told me that I was the financier of Mongiki and that they have a check which I issued to Mongiki to finance them. And I used to tell them, bring me the photocopy. <laughs> they said, you know, we know. So one week I got tired of this. And when I said I stood up, I got annoyed. And I said, no, James O'Peel, the chairman, told me, Apana Kasirika, you see, we are giving you respect even, we're giving you a chair to sit on. Then I said, this chair? It was one like that one, tight one. I stood up and threw it away. And I told him, don't give me and then the people said me, ah, oh, I see, Sasa Tauna, Tuanguo, Tuashati. 
and I talk shit. <laughs> then I said, uh, what else? What the hell mean it was surwali? I was just telling him, do you want me to remove his trousers? And then he said, ah, Pama, but your tummy looks funny. He was joking. Yeah? He too boyako on the kind of funny. <laughs> and I said, I was also get fed up. I said, no, my tummy is looking better than yours. Where are you going to And you try this in your house. <laughs> Sit down, straight your legs, yeah? stand up. In about three, four minutes, there about, I was sweating. Then one of the interrogators said, ah, watch I, I was even sweating. Then I said, okay, Basi Rudi, to Taunana Kesho. That was, then a few days, two days later, they released me. So the detention itself, although fourth, it was dated fifth. Therefore, it was after midnight. I refused to sign, to accept it, and uh, the police commissioner, Nairobi area, just signed here. He says he refused to sign, and uh, I handed him. He refused to sign. Then the officer serving it signed it. Despite our detention, yeah. the whole country, however, those, because we were not only four of us, there are many of us working, as I told you earlier. Yeah. Whoever remained out, they decided the meeting must go on. License or not. So the meeting went on on the 7th, we were, when we were in detention. And that's when a lot of people had died. died. He was held in three prisons for nine months. Naivasha, Kamiti, and Shimo Latewa. While at Kamiti, he stayed the longest. The detention life was terrible. I can tell you that. It was, first of all, incognito. You are alone. You know, you are not with the other detainees. Just you and the guards. And I usually had about six to seven guards. And I used to joke with them, all oh, people, you are guarding me, all of you, strong people. Oh, look at me, I'm small. <laughs> what do you think? You're wasting your human energy. But I used to joke with them, but it was in, you get to be alone, not with any other detainee. And uh, only you in that block, <coughs> for example, in one block I had, there were about eight, or whatever they call the cells. But I was the only prisoner there. All the others had to be empty. It was a very psychological war, in that you even lose the date. You can't remember what time it is, what date it is, and so on. But that was the life there. Feeding was also terrible. Uh, medical doctor of the prison had recommended that I be given things like milk because I was really very weak. If you saw me uh, that uh, the pictures they took after that you'd be surprised. But I never got the milk. He recommended meat or fish. I never got those. He recommended that I should be given a bed because I was lying on the floor. And my problem was sinusis because of the dust allergic to dust and so on. It affected my every system and I developed this illness of goiter. Now goiter is something that comes out here. Unfortunately mine went in and it was gagging me to death. My this thing was crooked. It was being pushed by the goiter. So the doctor said if this fellow is not treated quickly he will die. I couldn't sleep comfortably. I would sleep, lie down for about five, ten minutes and then <coughs> sit up to breathe. It was terrible and I think the doctors feared that I would die and they sent a recommendation that I should go to hospital quickly or be removed to 
So the president, Moi then, and his government, instead of taking me to hospital, they preferred to get me out, obviously hoping that I would die. Chamacha Raya. Akuna, to become a candidate, and your party will charge you. Yes. Raya wa kawaida wezi kupata hiyo pesa. So, even these parties, uh, all of them, I can mention them, they are also blackmailing democracy. Because mwananchi wa kawaida, hawezi kuingia bunge kama huna pesa hiyo. Secondly, multi party tulitaka ilikuwa ni multi party kabisa. Hii multi party wamenyakuwa imekuwa personal. Hakuna principle ni personal. Hmm? But to me a proper democracy if what you want is what I want you don't put up you don't form another party you come to us we form. Okay? Today it is is really a joke. You form coalitions when you go to fight. Instead of forming coalitions after the elections. But they want to form coalitions before. And you ask me, what is the difference between this and the other one now? What are they, the coalition? Yeah, nani, no, nani? Eh? Okay. Angaria ile inginia code. Ni nani, no, nani? They form coalition before. To me, to be honest with yourself and thank God for it, be honest with yourself. What is binding you? Only power. And what is binding you? Ni upate power. Na hii power nataka ya nini? Ukanyage watu wengine. Why? I can tell you the other cord. If I come up you are cheating people, you people. What what is what is the difference between party he na he na ile na ile diwafanye? What is what is the unifying factor? Is it taxation? Is it public affairs? Is it a set system of government? Is it uh, what? Or is it personality? To me, it's nothing more than power. No akishika power, no angalia samambo ya navioendelea. So, democracy today, to me, is really a joke. They are joking. And they underestimate people's intelligence. And one day, will people will say, we have had enough. MP, on a part of Pesa, over 800,000 in 30 days, a part of Sama per month, in 30 days, <laughs> to give the proper perspective of it, 30 days, you get 800,000. That is basic, that is Bushara. But plus, in Guinea, nearly 500,000 for seating allowance, traveling allowance, petrol allowance, entertainment allowance. So a member of parliament, in my view, my estimate, gets about 1.3 million, 1.2 million a month, 30 days. Now, 1.2 million in 30 days is how much per day? 40,000 per day. 40,000 per day? You only? Eh? Now on the power, you use that power, kupata contract to uko. You are uh, you, an influence. Eh? So, <laughs> Leo, the situation to me is very volatile and is very dangerous. There are several commissions. Now, it's okay if they have these commissions working, but these commissions are not working. They're fighting one another. You see, I think even Kenyans politically are asleep. Mpaka wa wake up. 
commissions and commissions are fighting one another. I have never thought this could ever happen to Kenya, that one department of government taking another department of government to court. This is happening now. Who is cheating who now? Mwananchi has no f bright future unless we change this attitude. So economy is being mismanaged. You see salaries, commission, they are not given salaries. I think when they sit down, they decide how much to get. Parliament itself, wanafanya committees nyingi. Government wanampa tender huyu. Parliament wanasema hii mbaya, tufanya commission ya kuangalia hii tenda ile pao nani, kwa nini. There is also unemployment. Nyingi kama you young people. A lot of young people. I, <clears throat> because of my background, I look at the people in the street when I go, like uh, Wanausa, second hand thing, Mitumba, Ingin Wanausa Chakura. As every, I don't I buy my oranges on the street, now in the street now, Wanausa Machungwa. Young people, Wengin Wanausa Kitamba. Tauno, ingine, sabuni, nini. Trying to scratch a living. But I look at them and I say, these young people are trying. But really, this is not good. They are trying and the government should feel concerned. The way to be concerned, one, reduce heating. Where come and mean, ni kempi unapata 1.2 million kwa nini? Ondo wa hiyo mpaka... If you don't live in 200,000 a month, then you are not good eh? people servant. When afanya kazi yako, ukafanya mamilioni yako. But public service should be able to spread. Our vijana, to put a project is all. Peleke hao kwa mashamba walime. And so But you look at the old people also, the hospitals. Eh? This devolution, we have good it. My governor now, onataka. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I have nothing against the governors because I can see them. It's like when I was mayor here, independence came. Because Nairobi was run by like a governors. Uh, it was not uh, different from what is governor now. I disagreed with him. I disagreed with... But that was on principle. And I can tell you frankly, from my heart of hearts, I don't, I don't hate him as an individual. No, 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 no. But I, in fact, said it openly at a big meeting. Those who retain me, more who retain me, as a Christian, I am not a Christian. I am a Christian. But I'm not against, I don't hate him as a person. But I'm terribly critical of his way, the way he did things. We celebrate Charles Wanyoi Kerubia as a true Kenyan hero. This is a story of a hero who has lived to tell the story, from detainment to being a solid political veteran to retirement. You fought for the country's second liberation and this shall ever remain in Kenyan's history. We wish you well, Mr. Rubia.